After days of chaos and gang violence in Haiti, embattled Prime Minister Ariel Henry has agreed to resign, announced the chair of the Caribbean Community and Common Market on March 12. This comes after members of the regional bloc CARIC-1 met in Jamaica on March 11 to discuss a political transition in Haiti, which has been functioning without an elected Prime Minister and a parliament since the assassination of former leader Jovenel Moyes in 2021. Following a meeting in Kingston, Caribbean Community Chair and Guyana President Irfan Ali said, We acknowledge his resignation upon the establishment of a transitional presidential council and naming of an interim prime minister. Henry, an unelected and highly unpopular leader who led the country after Moyes, is currently stranded in Puerto Rico after being prevented by armed gangs from returning home. While Henry's advisor Jen Jr. Joseph confirmed the resignation in a statement to CNN, the Prime Minister said he would resign after the creation of a transitional presidential council. After the Council of Ministers tonight accepted to put into place a transitional presidential council, the members of the council will be picked after agreement with different sectors of the national life. The government I am running will remove itself immediately after the establishment of said council. It is far from clear who will step in after Henry's resignation. One name touted is Guy Phillip, a rebel leader recently deported from the U.S. to Haiti after serving time for money laundering. The leader of the 2004 Haitian coup had joined calls for Henry to resign and expressed his desire to enter politics. Heavily armed gangs have controlled the streets of the Haitian capital of Port-au-Prince, since Henry left for Kenya last week to sign an agreement to send 1,000 Kenyan police officers to Haiti to restore the security situation of which his government has lost control. An alliance of gangs called G9 Family and Allies led by police officer-turned-gangster Jimmy Cherizier, who was known as Barbecue, demanded the resignation of the unelected Prime Minister Henry and opposed the entry of yet another batch of foreign forces in the country. Cherizier last week warned that Haiti would be heading straight for a civil war that will lead to genocide if Henry did not resign. Today, we are taking the occasion to tell the international community to give Haiti a chance. Because what is happening in Haiti now, we Haitian have to decide who is going to lead the country and what model of government we want. We are going to figure out how to get Haiti out of the misery it is in now. If the international community continue on the road they are in now, it will plunge Haiti into further chaos. Gangs currently control virtually all of Port-au-Prince, as well as the main roads to and from the capital. They have in recent days burned police stations, closed the main international airports, and raided the country's two biggest prisons, releasing more than 4,000 inmates. The latest violence has killed dozens of people with a further 15,000 displaced since the attacks began. Henry was under pressure from the United States, which has militarily intervened in the Caribbean country several times to secure a political settlement. U.S. State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller, on March 6, said the U.S. was not calling on Henry to resign, but was urging him to expedite the transition to an empowered and inclusive governance structure to prepare for a multinational security mission and eventually for elections. Meanwhile, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, who was at the regional summit in Kingston, promised an additional $100 million for a United Nations-backed force to stabilize the country. We support the plan to create a broad-based, inclusive, independent presidential college that would, in particular, first take concrete steps to meet the immediate needs of the Haitian people, second, enable the swift deployment of the multinational security support mission, and third, through that deployment, through a reinforced Haitian national police, create the security conditions that are necessary to hold free and fair elections. Given this increasingly urgent need, um, I'm announcing today that the United States Department of Defense is doubling its approved support for the mission from $100 million to $200 million. Henry had failed to hold elections last year, saying the country's insecurity would compromise the vote. 
but his decision only further enraged protesters who have for months demanded he stand out as Haiti slid further into poverty and rampant gang violence. The United Nations estimates around 1 million Haitian children are out of school, making those who live in gang-controlled areas prey to being recruited. A state of emergency in the OAS department, which includes Port-au-Prince, was imposed in early March and has been extended until April 3. It remains to be seen if Haiti will finally see the emergence of an independent elected leader or spiral into further chaos in the coming days.